I mean, they were extremely common until just recently, historically recently. Not recently like metrosexual is a word now recently, but recently. Are we still talking about anvils? Yes. Where did all the anvils go? You're talking about those big, heavy metal things. That blacksmith hammered horseshoes and stuff on. Everyone had them. They were featured prominently in every movie western. So where did they all go? Well, I don't know that they were that common. Wiley e. Coyote used them. That's how common they were. Who? The cartoon. He was always trying to drop an anvil on the Roadrunner's head or shoot it at him out of a giant slingshot or fire it at him out of a cannon. Inevitably, the cannon tilted up, shot it in the air. It fell down and made an anvil-shaped impression on Wiley e. Coyote's head. This is a cartoon? No, no, this just happened to me the other day. I was walking down the street and this giant anvil... Yes, Mother, it's a cartoon. I know she sounds nuts, but it's a very common cartoon. But that doesn't prove that anvils were so common. It does. It proves that anvils were so ubiquitous at one point. Was that the word, ubiquitous? Depends on where you're going. That they knew that children would know what they were and delight in them. That's how common they were. Children watching cartoons. That was the word. I've forgotten your point. Where are all the anvils? I mean, is there some sort of secret anvil storage facility the government is keeping from us? Or they fell into disuse with the advent of other technologies, and so they melted them down and they're gone. But they're not supposed to melt. They were made to withstand the red-hot hammer of the town blacksmith. This is easily the most pointless conversation we've ever had. I don't hear anyone chiming in with rational theories. Please change the subject, I beg of you, anyone. Well, the girls don't know the big news about Jason and me. You're pregnant? We are acquiring another company. I was close. Already? You just started yours. The insurance business is changing so rapidly, you have to adapt to keep up. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, Grandpa. Don't get the wrong idea. It's not a big company. It's smaller than ours, but very powerful. Wait, the company is smaller than yours? Your company is two guys, you and Jason. This company is a one-man operation. Bob Sutton. So you're acquiring Bob? We are acquiring his company, and his company is him. Did he have to give himself two weeks' notice? <laughs> no. Is there going to be a sad little going away party where he brings in his own cake and blows out his candles? We are all celebrating with a dinner tomorrow, us and the wives. Ugh. You're not big on the Bob? Bob's fine. We've known him for years. It's that dolt he's married to. Classic trophy wife. She is quite young. How young? Her car looks just like Barbie's. Regardless, I hope you will be kind to her at dinner. I have to bring my English to Dumbbell Dictionary. Focus on Bob. Bob's as sharp as they come. He's very brilliant, I'll give you that. Bob's brilliant, huh? He's a Rhodes Scholar. Ask him where the anvils went. Or not. <laughs>